So anything that is cylindrical in shape, you can make a container with this threaded um, method here. Basically, it's like a jar, like a jam jar, whatever jar. And yeah, for this one, it's little uh, cylinder that's going to hold a live center. So I've embossed on the side there, so I know what it is. Live center MT2. And it roughly contours the M the uh, live center for the lathe um, with a roughly about one millimeter extra buffer of space there around the edge, so it's not too tight. And all right, let's um, let's get into it. I'll show everyone how I made this in Fusion 360. So, starting a new design, um, we just want to have a sketch on that plane there. So the first thing we'll do is measure, measuring the different diameters of of this. So the first one will be, we're looking at 39 mil on this diameter. And the inner diameters here they're about 20 mil, so just measure that. We'll go 19. So we'll go 19 mil for this one and this one. C for circle. Now I can click anywhere there. D for dimension and 19. So now we can use that same circle for the top and the bottom part and then we need a few other offset lines for the outside wall and where the uh, the two threaded parts will meet up. So depending on how rugged you want the the unit um, will depend on how you do this. But I'll just go with three mil for this section, and I'll make it five because I have to cut back into that on the inside. So um, the the bottom. Yeah, the the bottom part will be the larger diameter or the female thread, um, and then the inside one will be smaller. So we'll say we'll cut that in half at two point five, and then to make this work a bit easier, I'm going to make that two. And so that two will be for the male thread on the top lid. Um, so I guess you can make the lid the female or the male, it doesn't really matter. I'll finish that and get started with some extruding so we can work out where we are. And go from there, I'll probably have to come back to this sketch, so that's alright. Um, so the bottom part's definitely going to have that one. And that one. Um... Yeah, I'll just go ahead and use all of them and then cut back in, which is another way. There's a few different ways to do this, but... So I'll zero that off. And... Where are we? So... I need to go... This dimension here. Where are we? Okay. So that's about 108. I can round it up to 109 plus 3mm for the bottom uh, layer, I guess, the bottom surface, so 112, and we'll go down, so that's negative, so keep the orientation how we want, and of course it always turns off the visibility of the sketch, but we can turn it back on now, that's our basic starting point, now uh, let's cut into this. Uh, yep, these two are going to have to go down this this dimension here. Call it 44 mil. Negative 44. Cut. Good. Then this one will cut down almost all the way. I believe that was 109 mil. So yep, not quite all the way. It'll be negative 109, leaving 3 mil. Uh, I guess you call that the floor layer. Alright, so let's have a look at what we've got now. Turn off the sketches and have a quick look. So, 
this is a yeah basic um, concentric cylinders that this unit could slip into like that. All right, I need to add an extra piece for the the thread on the bottom of this one, which I can do now. I'll do it now. Uh, so we'll give it ten mil. All right, so that that part will have the this surface here that'll be threaded for our top part to screw into. All right, now we'll turn that body off, and I'll start doing the top one. So the top one, similar thing again. Here we can just extrude all that up, and how far do we have to go? Is going to be see that that dimension there. So that's 33 is pretty safe. 33 plus 3 is 36. Turn bodies on, turn off that one. This one's what we want to work on. All right, now I'll hollow that out. I just need this middle bit here. And I can just click on there to remember where we were. So 36, so it's going to be 33, giving us a 3 mil roof or lid wall thickness. Um, and then yeah, now we're getting somewhere. I'll get the thread part done first, and then we can play with tapers and embossing. What I'll do here is, yeah, if we see the that layer there. Now, I just need to add some more material onto the top of this. I don't need to, but it'll sort of make the thread, like showing where the thread part goes easier. Uh, it's going to be join and two two sides. The bottom one will be on the end of this, and then the other one will be there. Oh, is that not joining? Look at that funny line. Yeah, I want to turn that one off. All right, so I'm joining those. Turn off the sketch. Go to the thread. Thread. So let's see what it predicts it to be. 42 mil it reckons it is. Um, and then the pitch, we've got, we'll go the, uh, the biggest pitch, because that'll make a nice chunky thread, easy to 3D print. 42 by 4.5, let me just check what diameter this is. That's a 43 mil, so that works quite nicely. That'll cut into what body is there and then add body on for the, the thread we need. I just have to make sure that both threads are the same. Basically, that's it. So, thread 42. Okay. Uh, there, modeled. Remember to do modeled for 3D printing. And there you go. So, there's a thread. That's that part more or less done. I'll make it a bit fancier than that, but it's a good start. Now, we'll just do the same for this one. And we can inspect this in a minute to make sure that the threads have a tiny bit of gap. Yeah, that the tolerances are not too tight and everything's working. So that's got the same, actually, that's not the same as at 45 mil. Um, what was the other one? I'm going to check again. I think it was 42. Edit. 42 by 4.5. Edit. 42 by 4.5 that's good so they're the same pitch now we can have a look and see with this tool I've put my shortcut up here but normally it would be an inspect and section analysis so yeah you can modify your toolbar to make it quicker I found I use it quite a bit so I've put it a shortcut there now that cuts it in half if we click on that plane you can see so there's a little gap here so they'll actually screw together and um, there won't be interference. It should just have a nice feel to it, like a pretty standard thread mechanism. Now I'll do the emboss. So I'll turn on sketches, turn that one off. Now I need to offset plane first to put, not that one, an offset plane. Oh my goodness to write the text on that's going to be outside the body that's basically all we have to do 
if you try and do it inside the body it doesn't wrap properly I can't remember what if it works or if it doesn't work at all but it doesn't work properly so so we have an offset plane there now we'll do a sketch on that offset plane outside the body create text just draw your text box actually we'll work out which one we're on so we want that one text there drag it out there we go love center mt2 um, okay now finish sketch all right now we get to use this really awesome tool modify uh, no sorry create emboss sketch profiles so you click on the text faces click on the cylinder uh, it takes a second to think about it and then puts it on now just gonna make sure that it doesn't wrap around back onto itself and overlap and this one does not so that's good and that's it now for 3d printing this remembers from the last one I've done so that's negative 0.5 um, that will come up okay, that'll look okay. Having too much of an overhang, like two millimeters, might uh, have a bit of a rough edge around some of the overhangs, like on the underside of these overhangs, that'll, that might hang down a little bit and look a bit yucky. And uh, you've got to make sure you have enough uh, indentation so anything under 0.2 may not resolve in the slicer depending on what your settings are so 0.5 is uh, pretty reasonable and then of course you can go the other way and um, make it well that's actually embossing and then this is debossing so I just prefer debossing um, but anyway we'll, we'll say okay Okay, there you go. So there's the text in there. It's not showing up too well in this design space, but if I render that or when we 3D print it or even in the slicer, that should look quite good. Now, um, we can add some tapers, which don't, they're not necessary, but... Uh, sorry, yeah, chamfers. Um, now, the point of the chamfers basically is to reduce the mass of the body or the volume of the body so that's quicker to 3d print so uh, for this one I've got the two distant instead of normally you'd have it equal and we have two distant and that allows you to really customize it um, and then what we can do even again we go to section analysis and we can cut away and have a look at the inside of the body that we're tapering so uh, now chamfer while it's in that mode on this one to start with so just need to type in a number to start with and then from there you can tab from one to the other and that'll be okay so downwards is I think roughly 60 mil yep and then back in this one we'll go about five um, yep that's okay hit enter on that one uh, while we're on this body I'll do another one on this outside bottom edge here and again we can keep in section analysis mode so you can see how much wall thickness we have in uh, in between the internal and external which is quite handy so yeah we'll just put two in there for now now switch back and forth so we'll go up 60 see what happens there and go in say 10 um, I think it needs to be a bit more than 10 we'll go 15 whoops wrong way five okay eight eight looks pretty good let's call it there and yeah that's okay now <clears throat> I'll add a fillet here as well but I'll do that with the other one together so I can do them both the same all right now let's turn the other body and do the same for this one chamfer this edge here So we'll go in five and up. How far is that? About 30. Okay. That's good enough. Leave it there. And the outside chamfer. So we'll go in five, down 20. 
Looks about right. Let's check the section analysis. Yeah, that's pretty chunky. I can probably take it in a bit more. So we'll go in um, 8. Yep. And 20 is still pretty good. What's 25 look like? Too much. We'll go back to 20. Alright, let's call it there. Now, I don't actually know how to turn off section analysis. I just have to go into it and drag it out. There must be a better way. But anyway, uh, there's our little design there. So obviously that'll print in that orientation and that will have no dramas. The thread, you may be worried whether that overhang on the thread comes out. There's a bit of an angle on there um, and that seems to be okay when they print, especially on larger prints. Fill it, so we'll turn both bodies on again. I want to fill it with this one and this one and that'll just give it a nice shape. So try 10. 10's not very much, try 20, 20 looks quite nice, and I'll just check that that fillet doesn't go off the edge of that, now that finishes there, so that's good. The last thing, uh, this is a little bit advanced, but I think it's worth doing, there's a few different ways to do this, like in the uh, thread tool you can see there's some options, I'll go into that first to talk about that, so... It says full length and then that hides some options. If you untick full length then you can have some other things in here like you can say how long the thread is and um, that'll stop the thread so you'll have an unthreaded part of the cylinder that'll allow you to line up the threads. And um, yeah, I found you don't need to do that but another way that I that we'll do for this is so one body at a time, new sketch on this plane, and uh, we'll go project include, intersect, yep, body, this body, and we'll make it a construction okay. Now turn off the body, and that leaves us with a nice dotted outline of where that plane intersects that body. Alright, so we're going to line tool, turn off construction, and what we're going to do is make a little wedge triangle here that'll make a ring, it'll chamfer out the inside of this cylinder. So, so that's, that's fine, that's probably perfect. So we'll say finish sketch, revolve and it's going to be cut, it's going to say there's no body to cut and this one, body one cut, axis, right axis there cool, so it's going to cut all the way around the edge, say OK now, it might be hard to tell but we've just removed all that material there and that'll make that easier to screw in which we'll demonstrate uh, in the workshop now the other do the same for the other one Cut out, revolve, axis, there we go. And it's going to be cut down that body. Right, so this doesn't make sense now because we have the two units so we can have a closer look at the camera, but it's going to allow us to thread the units together more easily. This will talk about having that cut away. Um, yeah, if you don't have that, it's going to be able to thread the units together. Um, yeah, it should just be easier to start threading together. Right, so it's okay there. And just that. Um, that should have cut away. And uh, that's all good to go. Two bodies. Yep. Now, we'll go tools, make. Preview mesh, yep, so high quality, and I'll save that. I've already saved these, so I'll open them up in the in the Prusa slicer. Okay, so these are the other ones that I've modeled, and I've already got these 3D printing now. So while that's 3D printing, I'm making this video, and then uh, when they're finished 3D printing, I'll, um, we'll have a look at it, and then we'll all get to see how it turned out. So... Yeah, as you can see, 9 hours, or almost, what is it, 10 hours. Um, I've got this printing at 0.2mm 
20% infill 3D honeycomb and two perimeters using eSun black ABS. So let's have a look how that turned out. So you can see that thread, how cool is that? And then it just goes straight down. So if I hit one, I get an overhead view. Now that, yeah, it's important when you're adding the, the thread, um, it's, it's easy to accidentally add material that will get in the way of the inside diameter of the rest of the vessel or the, the container and um, yeah obviously you just have to be mindful of that so otherwise you won't be able to fit whatever it is in the container um, <laughs> I'm sure I made that sound more complicated than it is but yeah that looks good so there's a fair bit of infill there you can see uh, where's that emboss yeah, hopefully that, hopefully you can see that. Emboss there, yep, and there's the taper. And the other thread on the other one. So this is the, uh, the top lid. That thread looks cool. And... Yeah, I've got a little brim and the base layers, yeah, so even though there's only 3 mil, we've got quite a few layers there before that closes that off, so that's closing there, so that's, yeah, 3 mil, 15, oh yeah, of course, 3 times 5, okay. So that's it, let's, uh, yeah, by the, by the time uh, you see this, you have the, the magic of editing and this print will be done. Uh, for me, I have to wait for it, and then we'll we'll check it out in the workshop. Okay, let's uh, let's go and look at it in the workshop. <laughs>